This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Today is kind of like a seconding opening day in Major League Baseball because we have got games scattered throughout the entire day. And I know that my plan is to watch these games while I work. And I thought that some of you may want to do the exact same. I won't tell your boss if you don't tell mine. So what I wanted to do was to run through some bets you can make across these games in case you want some action on these. Of course, always betting responsibly. But I think that it could be fun to get some action in on these games if you are so inclined. So going to break down what my numbers are seeing across the day games for today across Major League Baseball, hopefully getting information in a fast fashion so you can fill out your bet slips, go on and enjoy your day before first pitch. These games getting away underway at 1235 p.m. Eastern. That is our goal for today is to break down Major League Baseball. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer an analyst for number fire you're to break down today's slate across major league baseball letting you know my favorite money line strikeout and home run props you can bet over at FanDuel sportsbook we'll dig in to all these games beginning with the money lines in just one second but first a reminder that our masters preview podcast is up with brandon gadula we broke down his favorite outrights his favorite non-outrights his read on Augusta, some stat digging he has done into Augusta over the past couple of years as well. That is up over on the FanDuel uh, YouTube page and on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. So go search for it, Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating. Big thank you to those of you who have done so already. And of course, tomorrow, we some baseball again. I'll also talk some NASCAR on the show. Plenty more to come across the rest of this week. Of course, NBA playoffs just around the corner. So make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread. Are you looking to have a stake in the Masters all weekend? Well, FanDuel has you covered with the PGA Mega Eagle DFS contest, which is now live. Test your knowledge of the PGA Tour by putting together a six-person lineup while staying under the salary cap and using FanDuel's live scoring feature, follow along as you compete for a share of $750,000 with first place taking home $150,000 all for just a $15 entry fee. There are plenty of options to help you fill out your lineup as you compete for a first place. Thursday will be here before you know it, so submit your lineups on FanDuel today. Eligibility restrictions apply. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app for more details if you want a DFS breakdown of the Masters. We did that as well. That's also on the FanDuel YouTube page and up on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Let's begin the MLB discussion for today by talking about some money lines. There are four money lines where my numbers are showing enough value today where I'd be okay betting it. And those are on the Astros, Giants, Braves, and cringe Nationals. We'll do the Nationals last because I understand if you don't want that one on your bet slip. I don't really either, but you know, hey, value is value. Let's start things off here with the Astros. Their money line against the Tigers for today is minus 255. And the start of the year for the Astros has been pretty close to a nightmare. Uh, they are two and four so far this year. So getting 72% implied odds for them to win this game seems pretty steep. I've got the Astros at 74.6%, so a bit above the implied mark here. And it makes sense why they struggle. Their lineup is diminished from what it was. They've lost some key pieces, but they got Christian Javier starting for today. Javier, uh, he's a righty facing the Tigers. The Tigers' active roster has a 79 WRC plus versus righties since the start of last year. The Tigers swing at Roder Rodriguez. He is a lefty facing the Astros. And yeah, they have lost a lot of key pieces. No Jose Altuve right now. Michael Brantley's out. So they, they're missing key guys. But they still have seven players on the current active roster who have a WRC plus of 100 or higher against lefties since the start of last year with a minimum of 100 plate appearances. Now, WRC plus is not a number I want to look at in such small samples. It is frankly atrocious in that small sample, but it tells me if we use it in this regard that they still have enough guys. They've got volume of hitters who can hit well versus lefties. So when I see their mark versus lefties, I still put stock in it because I think there's still enough guys here who can do well versus a Southpaw. So 
I do think this number may be a bit reactive to the uh, the record for the Astros so far this year. I think they've underachieved. I think they're undervalued. So minus 255 to me is totally, totally fine. Both the Giants and the Braves are teams that I have favored to win for today, but they are currently underdogs at FanDuel Sportsbook. The Braves are plus 106. Uh, the White, the Giants are plus 114 against the White Sox. Let's start things off here uh, with the Giants throwing out Logan Webb for today. And if you watched Logan Webb on opening day against the Yankees, you can probably understand why we are here. He was lights out in that game with a bunch of strikeouts. And I don't find that super surprising. I bet Logan Webb to win Cy Young last year, which did not go well, but he improved down the stretch. Seemed like he figured stuff out in August, September to get him back to closer to what he was back in 2021, which was a legitimate Cy Young contender. Not sure if he's quite there again, but a big strikeout game gets me intrigued. He's facing the White Sox here, a 99 WRC plus against righties in their current active roster. Not a ton of power. So I think Webb can get the job done here. On the opposing side, you got the White Sox, their bullpen, their defense, not huge boons for them. You could say the same thing about the defense for the Giants as well. Um, but I do think that plus 114, a good number to get the Giants at. I think 50.3% to win. The implied odds at plus 114 are 46.7%. As far as the Braves go, they are starting Bryce Elder. And I feel pretty good about Elder. You look at what he did last year in a very small sample. It was 10 appearances in the big leagues, nine uh, starts. He looked good. He had good results. The peripheral is not quite as tasty, but still decent. And I think it makes sense because in AAA last year, really solid numbers. Now, it's a tough task here. He is facing the Cardinals. Um, they're a very good offense. They don't strike out a ton, but the bullpen behind Elder is really good. So should Elder have issues, I have faith in the Braves to you know, at least keep things tight later on this game. Miles Nicholas is on the other side of this game. Uh, he's fine. He's someone I respect in terms of his pitching, but not someone you need to fear all too much. So I had the Braves at 50.9% to win, implied odds 48.5%. So both these teams, decent little values, slight favorites from me, whereas you're getting plus money on the money line. So I will take that and take on both the no both of those. The final one is the Woofer here. Uh, it's the Nationals. I, again, understand if you don't want it. They are plus 220 at home for a reason. The reason is they stink. And they're also throwing Patrick Corbin. So the idea of putting money on Patrick Corbin is not fun at all. I do not like that. But the implied win odds of the Nats are 31%. I have them at 36%. So still pretty low, but just not quite as low as the market. So I'm going to take this personally. I have bet this. Um, but... I don't blame you if you'd rather not. I think the other route you could go here would be the total. Right now, uh, the total is eight runs, minus 115 on the over. I find that pretty intriguing because, again, it is Patrick Corbin, so that's uh, definitely a boost for the total here. Shane McClanahan, obviously a very, very good pitcher, but not a ton of strikeouts recently. Um, look, looking back at last year, he's made some changes to his repertoire. I'm not sure if that's why the strikeouts have been down, throwing more forcing fastballs recently. It's been a little bit odd. Uh, so going on the road here to face the Nationals, 83 degrees in D.C. for today. Very good uh, off or very good weather for hitting today. So you combine that with Corbin, combine that with some wariness around McClanahan. I think that does add up to uh, checking out the over here at eight runs. So if you don't want to go the money line, you could take the total instead. But I'm willing to put a bit on the money line here and kind of just see what happens. I have no interest in the run line. Maybe you're looking there like, okay, I want the run line. Uh, the Nationals plus one and a half and plus 126. Zero interest for me because the odds they get blown out in a loss with Patrick Corbin starting are pretty high. They could lose this game 14 nothing, and I'm not going to be shocked at all. So I'm not taking the run line here. I want the money line. If I'm going to bet it all, plus 220 is the money line for the Nats. Uh, and I do think that is fair. So the money lines I like for today, the Nats at plus 220. If you want to go there, uh, the Braves at plus 106, the Giants at plus 114, and the Astros at minus 255. In the strikeout prop department, I am on one of the guys we discussed in the money line section, and that is Bryce Elder. Elder again facing the Cardinals. His strikeout prop is at three and a half with minus 130 on the over. And I do think the over there is is good enough for me to take that. I feel good about Elder being strike 
get or stretched out because this is not his first start this year in the bit or overall, uh, because he did make one start in triple A and in that game, six innings. I have Elder projected for 85 pitches for tonight. Looking at Elder specifically, last year was interesting because again, he mentioned I mentioned that he made uh made nine total starts, four of those earlier in the year, four of them later on, and it seemed like he may have made a tweak in his pitch mix in that second stretch. And he had a lot of strikeouts after he came back up. Part of that may be because all five starts were against either the Nationals or the Marlins, a very cushy schedule for sure. But he is also a young guy. He did make some tweaks, as mentioned. So maybe he unlocked something. Four strikeouts in his AAA starts, not a ton there, but he's at three and a half right now in this one. Minus 130 on the over is not nothing. That is paying a decent amount, honestly. Um, it's important to know what the implied odds these things are so you can realize the difference between minus 105, minus 110. It actually does make a pretty big difference. The implied odds of minus 130, 56.5%. That's a pretty decent mark for sure. But with Elder being stretched out, with the possibility for more strikeouts, I think that's very fair. I am not assuming the increase in strikeouts in last year's sticks. I'm actually assuming it kind of regresses to his full season number. And even with that, I have Elder projected at 4.63 strikeouts. That's a decent amount above the 3.5. So Bryce Elder over three and a half strikeouts, minus 130, a decent spot for me to go to for today. And the one strikeout prop I feel decent about, you know, there are some other ones I was tempted by, specifically Logan Webb, if you want to shop around. Uh, he was over four and a half at like minus 120, but then got seen to minus 140, uh, minus 146 at FanDuel right now. If you can find a minus 125 or so on Webb over four and a half, I would take that. But at least at FanDuel specifically, Elder is the one strikeout prop that I am buying into. As mentioned before, home run props um, are not things I feel as much confidence in as money lines and uh, strikeout props. These are more so for fun for me. But there are two that I feel pretty good about based on looking at today's slate. And the first one actually does not mesh well with my thoughts on uh, the Nationals money line. Does mesh well with the total. That's Wander Franco. Hit home run. Now, Franco is plus 680 at FanDuel Sportsbook, I should mention. He is 8-1 to one elsewhere. So this is more of a broad recommendation of Franco, not at FanDuel specifically. Shop around, see what you can get on him. Uh, I got him 8-1 to one earlier on this morning. So shop around there. But Franco... I find this very interesting with his number being where it is, given that for his career, Franco has been a more powerful guy batting right-handed versus a lefty than the opposite. His ISO versus lefties for his career is 208 versus 143 against righties. The fly ball rate does go up a hair here. And Franco looks really good so far this year, specifically looking at the amount of loft he's getting. His fly ball rate is 44%, up from 31% last year and 34% the year before. A lot of injuries for Franco last year, so it makes sense that you might see some lag there. Does seem like he's maybe getting back to being what he was in 2021, at least early on this year. Now, it might not stick because it is a big jump for sure, but it is warm out again, 83 degrees. He is facing Patrick Corbin, who lets up a ton of hard contact, so... I think that 680 is a fair number. Again, shop around. You can get 8-1. to one. At least I was able to earlier on this morning. But I do think that Wander Franco is undervalued in the home run prop market. And I wouldn't be shocked if I'm just broadly on Franco against lefties early on this year, given the number we're getting right now on this one. I also do not mind Isaac Paredes. Um, he is plus 430 at FanDuel. I need a longer number than that. But if you can find Paredes at a longer number than plus 430, I would take it. Uh, he has hit for a lot of power against lefties. Probably going to bet third for today as well. So Paredes, I would check out. And then Franco, at plus 680, the primary guys, catching my attention for the Rays for today. The other longer odds home run prop that I like for Wednesday is going to be Michael Harris the second, and that is uh, in the Braves versus Cardinals game, facing off with Miles Mikolas. Now Harris over at FanDuel is eight to one to hit a home run for today. That is similar to what he is in uh, at other books as well. So probably one of the better numbers you can get here is at FanDuel on Harris at eight to one. Harris similar to Franco, not a huge fly ball guy. But he smacks the ball. He had a 45% hard hit rate last year. That is uh, the percentage of balls in play with an exit velocity of 95 plus miles per hour. 45% last year, 60% in a very small sample so far this year. 
13.3% barrel rate this year was 10% last year. And that's why you can see a guy hit 19 home runs in a small sample, relatively small sample last year, because he wasn't in the big leagues the entire year. You can see that happen despite not having a massive fly ball rate. And that fly ball rate does go up against righties, which is what he'll face today. Miles Nicholas starting here for the Cardinals. He let up a 37% fly ball rate to lefties last year. He's also been throwing a couple fewer sinkers recently, which has helped bring his ground ball rate down a bit. So Harris is 8-1 to one for a reason. Again, it's probably because of the low fly ball rate, because Nicholas broadly does a good job of keeping stuff on the ground. There are reasons why Harris is lower here, but if Harris lofts one, he can put it in the seats. And I think that that is very encouraging. We know the hard contact should be there. So home run props for today. Michael Harris, 8-1. to one. Wander Franco, you can probably still get 8-1. to one, So I would shop around for that one. Uh, 680 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Strikeout prop is Elder over uh, three and a half strikeouts, minus 130 in that Braves Cardinals game. And then the money lines I like for today are the Nats at plus 220, if you can still make it. But then the Braves at plus 106, the Giants at plus 114, and the Astros at minus 255. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. If you want some daily fantasy thoughts on the uh, early day games, we'll have those over on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed in just a bit. Again, if you're looking for our Masters podcast, search for covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts or go over to the FanDuel YouTube page. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Back again tomorrow, talking more baseball, talking about some NASCAR at Bristol Dirt this weekend. Looking forward to talking to all of you then about that. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.